Okay, this is the Troy Community Land Bank Marketing Committee meeting of January 13th, 2021. Um, it's a couple minutes early, um, so I'm going to just freeze the recording and wait for the committee to assemble. Start the recording. Um, hey, Jeanette. Hello. Um, so Hi, I Jeanette. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Hello. Kim. Happy 2021. Let's hope it gets over quick. <laughs> um, so, uh, Berta, Roberta Simpson, our community liaison, um, I thought was going to try to join us. So I'm not sure. I didn't hear back from her, so I'm not sure if she's, she's actually going to be able to. But uh, you've got you've got a full committee. <laughs> okay. I guess I should um, call the meeting to order at 4.32 on January 13th, 2021. And the roll call is Jeanette Nicholson. Present. Andrew Cooper. Here. Suzanne Spellin with Catherine Hedgeman and Tony Tazi attending. Here. For better or worse. Okay. Uh, the first thing on our agenda is the rebuild of the website. So, um, Tony? So I sent you guys out a, a dizzying email with all sorts of color. And um, that was to kind of give you the communication flow that I've had with Rick since the committee last met to talk about the website rebuild. Not sure if you guys had a chance to go through that. <coughs> well, um, um, I did. Yeah, I did too. I uh, barely um, got through maybe the first uh, two thirds of it and um, had to, to make a long story short, um, that I no longer have access to that email. My I had a computer malfunction, so that, um, that to me is lost. So I have to confess, I really didn't uh, review it um with well, any uh no i can do let's a just screen. say i didn't really review it um i can do a share of screen if that's hey berta oh she's connected she's not connected yet. yeah mm -hmm. yeah hi hello hi, hi. hello Hi, Bert. I'm still the man with no face. Oh. <laughs> he says it's better that way. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, um, are you guys able to see? Yeah, okay. I, I, I for sure can, Tony. Yes, yeah, I can. Does that help? I can, too. Do you want me to just walk through those comments and... Uh... Sure. Okay, so uh, as I said, I just kind of gave him a list initially of what the comments were that I heard from our last committee meeting. And then he responded in the red text and I responded um, generally in blue text. And then we had a conversation and the outtakes of that are in the blue text with the yellow highlights. So with that said, um, I'll just, I'll just read through them and you guys stop me really at any, any point you need to. So, um, Andrew, you said that, uh, beta testing is needed and I, and I think we all agreed that we know that, and that, that was the first run and, and that there will be beta, uh, beta testing before the site goes live. So that's still where we're at. Um, and any, uh, questions, comments? Nope. Oh, nope. Okay. And then the next is... Um, so, I explained to him that the committee wanted to see both the properties and the public authority information to be front and center. Um, and he was a little bit confused as to how the committee wanted to see that. And I, I just kind of kept saying the same thing over again. So what he said he was going to do 
is prepare two PDFs for the committee to take a look at, and then then um, the committee can you know decide which one of the two they like or not like. Um, but I think he at least has the message that we're looking to make that um, you know quote front and center unquote, which is what I heard several times. Uh, did I did I get that? You guys have any any more feedback? Oh, on that's that? that's what we said. We wanted the uh, public authority information to be right there so that nobody had to look for it. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Um, just, uh, so, uh, the images of people doing construction, um, I, he, he knows what we're, what we're looking for. Actually, he gave us what I, exactly what I asked him to give us, which were those happy smiley people. <laughs> so, um. He understands that that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for real life photos. And I said to him, I, I think we may have some. I'm sure we can get some from Youth Build. Um, I can ask some folks we sold property to if they have any. Um, but otherwise, I think that's something we may need to just add to, you know, as, as time goes by and as we're able to, to take some photos. Um, does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They is. I mean, the only question really for them is they'll they agree to put whatever pictures up there we can provide, <laughs> right? That's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Long think as, I mean, right? They'll do that. So we yeah. just need to get pictures. Yeah. Um. Need to learn that spell. Okay. So I think we're on the same page on that. Um. And the North Central buildings um the conversation i had with with him on that was um i said to him that i suspected suzanne had some photos but i, I do one. you do yeah okay i had a feeling you did <laughs> so um and i could certainly run out and take some more if we could um know. well he offered to do that but you know if you're looking for something to do in the cold weather <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm just bored here. <laughs> or, you know, if you have some addresses you want me to go shoot. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'll send you the best of what I've got, and, um, you know, we can decide what we want to put on there. Okay. Um, so I, I talked to him about a drone video, um, and as we got talking to it about it, I kind of said to him, you know, this is something that would be a nice feature for, you know, folks to get a nice warm feeling about North Central. Um, but I, but I said, I don't, I'm, you know, I said, I'm not speaking for the committee right now. I was just speaking out of my own head. I don't think, um, that's something that we need right off the bat and as a matter of fact we may want to wait for a point in time when the weather doesn't have snow on all the roofs and on the sidewalks and the leaves have not yet you know covered everything else up you know some something in between so he said he had someone that he could have do a drone video if that's what we'd like um we have the guy that i've been using to periodically um take some drone photos and videos of, of our properties. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Am I? Well, Tony, I have a question for you. Is any of the current footage, drone footage that we have usable? I mean, do you think it, it re represents North Central in a, a positive light? Um, well, let's see. It, it depends on the property. We've got an awful lot of um, 
photos and video of 791 as, <laughs> as it's been going up. No. Um, with the other properties, they've been, you know, some of the stuff has, has been projects that are in progress. Uh, some of it has been just, um, you know, taking photos of the roofs to make sure that there's nothing wild going on. And, you know, when I have him uh, shoot our properties, um, if I know that, like, for instance, there's something that's likely to be on the, the city's tax foreclosure list, I'll have him go um, do a flyover of that so we have an idea what the roof looks like at least. Um, sometimes I have him take a look at some of the na neighbor's buildings just so that if there's a problem, we can let them know. I don't tell them that we've taken their picture otherwise. <laughs> um, I know one time um, code enforcement said that there was a building that they were going to suggest the bank turn over to us. And it just happened to be the day I had the drone guy in and he did a flyover of the building and it was chock full of holes. I mean, it was unbelievable. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was definitely worth doing. So that's, that's the kind of stuff we have. What my thinking was kind of a slow aerial shot of North Central that wouldn't necessarily be building by building, but more about the, the overall neighborhood. That's my, those are my thoughts. So, you know, absolutely positively. I'm well, I could be wrong, but I'm not sure you really get a feeling for the neighborhood from an aerial shot somehow or another. I mean, if we're looking to um, sort of characterize the the uh, the neighborhood of North Central or the area, it seems to me um, shots from the street would make more sense since you get to see some of the detail of the building and also you know what's what's available at street level but i you know that's just so you're, you're thinking more building by building well not but you know sort of a span through north central oh. you know it doesn't have to be individual shots of buildings but i i think you know if 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 um oh, somebody no. did a video of um you know street level blocks yeah, that, so uh, kind of a, a low. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me the, would characterize or typify sort of the character of the neighborhood as opposed to something from above, which just shows you the street and rooftops. So closer to, to pedestrian. Yeah. Okay. Is I don't know. What do you guys think? I think basically you're right, but I think we could also do a, a nice couple of shots that are panned from like halfway across the river looking towards North Central or up on Oakwood looking down or something like that. Uh -huh. um, but in general, I think, yeah, street level would be better, but I think there's a way to do both. Oh, yeah, it certainly could do both. Um, or in combination. I mean, if we get someone that's really knows their editing and put something together. Uh, I, getting back to your original comment, I think, Tony, the, in terms of priorities, I would agree that, yeah, it's not like the first thing we need done yeah. for the website. Like, we need that our basics. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds, you know, I can imagine a lot of really cool things to do there. But um, Yeah, winter, winter's not the time. <laughs> yeah, but it, so, I mean, I don't know how... I don't know how far down the rabbit hole we want to go, but yeah, I agree. It would be it, there are a lot of um, neat opportunities there. Okay. So, um, speaking about the video, hi everyone. I'm Berta. Um, nice to meet you all virtually. Um, and nice <laughs> to see too. you, Andrew, again. Um, I know a few people who already have a video of North Central um, via drone. Uh, pedestrian view and uh, sky view um, and if it's not like specific buildings or properties I also know many people who are very good and actually live in North Troy who work with drones and video editing shooting already currently um, and I just checked while we were having this conversation to double check with my friend that I know that as a video of North Central. And they said, yes, they do have a drone video 
of North Central. Um, it hasn't been used anywhere in particular. Um, it already exists, but that those are just um, things that exist that I felt to share. So not saying we have to go that route or anything, but. Yeah, it just occurred to me too, maybe Breathing Lights has a bunch of stuff. They do, actually, that's where my idea came from. They, they have a beautiful shot that I haven't been able to pull up uh, uh, when I went looking for it last time of a night, uh, kind of a nighttime view. Uh huh. Um, yeah, that may be from the tour. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it, it really caught my eye. Um, so, okay, I mean, it kind of sounds like we have some, um, some resources already in place, sounds like, um, but also some ideas that we can chew on um, you know, after, after the website's closer to going online. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think this is a priority. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Not, not at this time, but it will be. <laughs> well, if there's people who already have resource or existing things, um, does it make sense to kind of collect them to look at in a later date? Um, oh, oh, sure. Yeah. It's, I think press. that's kind of like Suzanne has some photographs that she's going to send, um, you know, if your friends have the videos, then certainly um, it, we can circulate them among the committee so everyone can see what they look like. I can okay, cool. Them, I can keep them on file. Um, that's kind okay. of my thought going uh, going with the photos. Okay. Yeah, we could establish a Google, um, a Google Doc and just load them on there. Anybody could do that. Yeah, and we've got a Dropbox too, so we could do that. So um, I can reach out, or if you haven't started the dialogue with Tap about the breathing lights video, I'm not sure if Tap did it. Oh yeah, they would know yeah. where to get it from. Yeah, that's true. Oh, Tap didn't do the video. No, 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 no. But yeah, yeah, no, they Barb yeah. would know who to contact in regards to the video. Yeah. And I could probably also dig up the name of the person in charge of the Breathing Lights project. Anyway, on to the next thing. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I know we have a lot to cover today. Um, let's see. Okay, um, sorry guys. So um... the one thing I would just chime in and say, and this is just, I guess, a comment that we kind of have to think about. The written content for the web page probably is going to have to come from us. You know, um, yeah, they can do some, you know what I mean? But I, I find that, you know, if we're explaining a program or whatnot, we really have to spoon feed it to them or they're not going to be able to, you know, th they have writers, but it's tough to do that when you really don't know the organization. Yeah. So I think we need to think about content um, to the extent that it's already on our old page. They certainly can, you know, bring that over. So just a, something to think about. Um, yeah, I, I, we have a ton of stuff on our, our current website. Um, obviously some of it's become old, but, uh, yeah, I think some new narrative pieces would be helpful. Um, I think Berta is probably going to be giving us some good stuff that we can plug in. The yeah. other thing I'd noticed, um, or didn't notice, and if, if you did let me know, I'll stand corrected. Was there a blog component to this website? There, yeah, there, there was one that Chris Brown, um, was sometimes, uh, uh, able to operate depending. No, on I meant to Vibrant Creatives proposal. Oh, no. Yeah, because I think especially with Berta now and, you know, as we have things we want to post, um, you know, I think having the, the blog can, um, you know, take care of those little things. Okay, you know? I think I'm misunderstanding you. So are you asking if the new website will have a blog site? Correct. 
Yeah, I'm sure it will. Okay. Cool. Um, that, <coughs> so, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, but uh, I'm I'm almost sure that we were planning on that. Well, without getting too technical, a website is a blog. It's it's a website. <laughs> we can update it. I think the uh, probably the question is the format and is there a more or a less formal section that is you know more easily updated by you know whomever would be updating it um that we would sort of think of as a blog um which i agree there should be that somewhere um but i'm sure that regular updates i mean that's that was a that was part of our original discussion is we need a a platform that can more easily be updated right so that was sort of the main yeah one of the main things. So uh, I don't recall them discussing that specifically, but I can't imagine it's much of an ask if they haven't sort of put it on the list yet. Uh, we might want to verify that, yeah, there's, we need a, a location that other people can add content to in a sort of, I, I mean, I, I don't want to uh, assume anything, but that, you know, looks like a, you know, a, a chronological update as, as just how I think of a blog and maybe that's not what we're discussing but yeah um, some people put it in as news or events they call it that instead of a yeah, blog sure. so that it doesn't have to have like consist like you can update it but it's not like expected that it's like weekly blogs kind of give the feeling that there's going to be at least daily or weekly updates and news, calling it news and events kind of just shows that here are some things that we want you to know that are happening or things that are going on, or um, you can put blog material within that uh, subtitle. Yeah, we'd also have to decide whether or not we're going to accept comments from people. Ah, that's an excellent point. <laughs> and, and a very tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I um, one, I don't think we should um, for a lot of reasons, but two, um, and you'll have to forgive me because I recently, about six months ago, redid my own website and I am know more about search engine optimi optimization than I'd ever want to, believe <laughs> it or not. Um, but the blog piece, in addition to stagnant content or even added content to the website, um, and I guess what I'm thinking you would use it for is just that, like, hey, what are we working on? Um, it would have been nice to say, look at 791 River um, or whatever other example we want to use. You know, here's a photo, you know, quick stuff like that. Um, that isn't exactly something, you know, um, the news and events would be more like press releases, you know, enterprise funding, you know, land banks, um, you know, something regarding land banks overall, you know, or something like that. So I, I was just thinking of the blog in terms of, you know, you wouldn't have to continually do something every week, but it helps with search engine optimization. So if someone is searching for certain words, um, home ownership or, you know, rehab, blah, 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 they're going to pick up more if you have blogs going and the content keeps changing over. So that's the only thing I was, I guess, suggesting. Okay. Well, that sounds like we're going to need to put some more thought into that. Who's yeah, doing I mean, the website? It depends on how how much we update the website. That's all. Okay. Well, let me um, let me talk to Rick about it and get a little bit more information because I'm not up, as up to date as uh, some of you guys are. You might include in that discussion that the reference to the SEO, the search engine optimization, um, and see if they have thoughts about that. Uh, and Berta, to your question, I think it was who's updating the yeah. website. Um, I think it depends which part. Uh, Tony does some of the stuff, which was part of the big original question of uh, the current platform is really hard to update. <laughs> so hey, it wasn't working well. Um, and perhaps you will, I think, if was part of our discussion. I'm not saying anything definite. <laughs> um, and then I, I 
I don't know about our real estate, right? Like the real estate section, who's going to update that content or will it be some kind of automated feed from the MLS or, you know, there's some questions there. So I, I think maybe a few different people could be involved. Who's anyone... designing it now? Uh, Vibrant Brands is the name of the business. Cool. Normally, um, and we, if you might recall, opted not to uh, get a license for, oh shoot, the name is escaping me. But the, the larger land banks use this property management um, system. And part of that database, it has photos of the property and all the property information right there. So that's kind of what shows up. If you look at Albany's um, and even Syracuse's, that kind of, um, that's how they pull in pictures and information about the properties. Yours um, and and the, the license is cost prohibitive for you. It's like ten grand a year, and you don't have you know seventeen hundred properties. Exactly. So um, what you might want to think about and talk to the realtor, which is part two of this discussion, is it is going to be on MLS some of them. So it may very well be you link to MLS as well, uh, so that the photo comes up, the advertising packet, all of that. And then the ones that are just, you know, we have that we're marketing, but are not listed, you would need to have those up on the site. Um, and, you know, that's another maintenance thing. Like once we close and sell one, it's got to come off. So, and every property we own, regardless of whether we're land banking it or we're selling it or whatever has to be on the website. That's part of the statute. Um, yeah, well, I think we have that now, but I'm not sure. I think so. Um, I, I did an update about a month ago. Okay. Um, so, I'm not sure. So, okay, let me uh, keep going down the list. Um, so, Roberta, when I talked to Rick, who is the, pers the, the partner at Vibrant Brands that I've been mostly dealing with, um, he suggested that you put together um, a little narrative. Um, so the discussion was about um, the committee wanted to kind of highlight what you're doing for the land bank. <clears throat> I explained that to Rick. And so I said, we're going to want to have um, a, a, a place where um, the community liaison um, activities is pretty prominent. And he suggested a short narrative so people understand what that is and that it helps draw them into a page that would be created, for, you know, just specifically for the community liaison, um, you know, objectives. Okay. Um, I can come up with that. Um, I'm trying to think. I can pretty much get that done at least by end of week next week so that I can go through, double check, maybe have Kamali double check as well and um, get that to you. Um, I, I wouldn't put this on your to-do list as an urgent need because there's stuff, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be um, pulled together for the, the new website. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's something you can do and you know have it behind you, then that's that'd be great too. Okay. Yeah, I think it would be something that I'd uh, want to tackle and get get done, just so it's there. Okay, I hear when you. When it is time to be used. Um, if you're like me, if you do it while you're thinking about it, that's the best time it gets done. <laughs> uh. Do you know the um, software that's going to be used uh, for for the website, so that once it's created when when it's time to make updates um, we do not and that's because what we decided we wanted to do was to get a um, get a feel for uh, and get recommendations also from vibrant for what they think will work best um, what generally what they they like is um, is a concrete five That's what it says in the notes. Yeah, I believe it's Concrete 5 that they, they most often use. 
but they're they have they have a long laundry list of um of software that they they tell me they can use okay So on the uh, on the scrolling piece, Rick disagrees with the committee. Um, so what I said to him was, um, I think this was your comment, Suzanne, um, that scrolling and scrolling and scrolling um, is a distraction. And I and I noted that um, Suzanne, you said that you want you 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 don't even scroll much beyond the bottom of what you see because it's just a pain in the neck his coming uh, I, I don't think i said that <laughs> well I, then I depends apologize. on what it is i apologize no um, it's no biggie i guess it depends on what the site is if it's something i'm really looking for but if i'm just pop onto somebody's site i you know if i'm not interested on that first page yeah i don't i don't often go all the way down um well, so what he said was most websites are going to like the Facebook format where you, you do scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, so that's what he's still recommending. Um, and I just said I'd, you know, kind of bring that back and get. Well, I, I don't have strong feelings about it. My, I only think that we ought to have those most important features on the on that very front page if you have to scroll down you have to scroll down i'm you know i'm not gonna that's not a hill i'm gonna die on <laughs> um, good <laughs> I, yeah and i think there's a variety like some people are gonna prefer one thing or the other and uh, you know they're presumably they do have experience in this regard um but maybe it's also that it's what they're comfortable with which can also be true in this kind of dynamic so uh but but I'm not I don't I'm not even looking at the hill from here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I um outside of being here, I do a lot of websites for people. So I um, do a lot of website design, and you do want to have basically like a CTA call to action area on the home page, which would create that scrolling effect. Um, so all the main things should have something where it's mentioned on that very initial page where you'll be scrolling. And then there's like little buttons that you add that can take people further. So it's like, oh, looking for a new property. You, you're not going to list all the properties there, but you'll probably lead people from that homepage to the property page or to the resource page or to the about us page. So kind of like creating a quick little entry of all the important things on the home page, which is usually put in scrolling effect. But that makes sense. Has has anyone sent Berta the link of the test site they sent us to look at? I have not. That's okay. probably a good idea. Oh for yeah. I would love to see. For a dollar I could do it. <laughs> um Okay, let me write that down. Right now it's just a, uh, a PDF. So I will, I will get that to you tomorrow or later today. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's see, keep going here. So um, Andrew, this was your comment that there's not enough uh, detail to provide comments on, but I think you also recognize that it's early in the game at this point. Um, so I, I think, you know, my conversation was with Rick with Rick was just recognizing that fact that we know there's got to be a lot more detail that go, has to go onto the website, um, and that there's basically there's more review work that will have to happen as as it comes together. Is that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it didn't need to go anywhere. I, it was just sort of part of the conversation. So yeah, that's, that's sufficient notation for me. Okay. 
All right, sorry. Uh... Tony, you're so thorough, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm known to have diarrhea of the email. <laughs> Very well known for it, unfortunately. <clears throat> um, so I mentioned the search field and uh, Rick immediately knew what we were talking about. So um, he said, that's not a problem to do. Front right corner, or upper, I should say upper right corner. So we're good with that? Good, yep. Okay. Um, so when I, when I talked to Rick about, um, Andrew, your comment that um, you understood that websites are best developed when they're developed for um, a mobile device first and then you know the uh, computer website design um, and well you can see in the notes he feels that our site is so simple that it should be able to work very well either way you know I'm not sure if he was just kind of sidestepping that because I you know I heard what, what folks were saying um, I mean my thinking right now is let's see what he comes out with before we could really dig our teeth into anything yeah i don't i don't know that there was any place to go with that except as a just something to keep in mind from again and i'm not i'm not the expert it's just what i had heard and that you know more people are online on their phones than than on computers these days so um yeah it's something to think about and i don't even know that it's a design priority i mean we have our regulatory obligations are, are number one like we have to have what needs to be there there it has to be easy to update so we can stay up to date and then yeah it should be as easy to navigate as possible for people generally but then that gets into gray area so so yeah i don't know if there's anything else to do with that okay well, that... i'm sorry, oh, sorry. I was going to ask, does that mean we have like a land bank app or does that just mean we can get on the phone and access it through Google or whatever your operating system is? Uh, he didn't mention anything about a, an app per se. Um, so I'm thinking it would just be, um, you know, the, the typical. It's just a mobile version of the site. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, the priorities are different on a small screen. And, and the shape of the screen is usually, you know, the orientation is different from most desktop environments. So, you know, things move around, they squish, they stretch, they, and, it, you know, there's, you got to find the happy, crazy. happy medium. Yeah, that will be easy for them to do. Um, because usually it sounds backwards, but when I do sites, I start with the desktop version first, and I kind of get the run through. And then I edit the mobile version next. So when you're creating sites, it kind of creates a mobile version for you. Um, and then you have to edit things like change sizing, change the you know photo so it fits within the screen. Um, but they'll know exactly what to do with that. They'll make sure that the desktop version version is a uh, kind of comparable to the mobile. There's some things you leave out in mobile that you kind of put on desktop, but I think imagine they'll start with the desktop version first because then it, it kind of makes the mobile version for you. You just end up having to make slight changes of sizing, font, and um, call to action buttons, leaving things out. But it makes it, usually it makes it super easy when you go that route. Uh, that is what Rick said. He was moving forward with the, uh, you know, the computer rent uh, version first, and then the mobile. So, um, it, it's good. my skeptical heart when someone says, "Oh, it's easy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, so my spidey easy. sense goes off. <laughs> but oh. I mean, they are the pros. So, and, and I don't, I don't, I, I don't think that they're going to have a problem creating both sites. It really was just sort of an, in, a, in an ideal scenario. That's what I had heard. And I'm sure it does not always apply. So, so yeah, I mean, it's noted. I don't, I don't have anything else to say about it. Okay. Um, so I talked to him about the property section and that we, we wanted to look like an MLS site. And he said that's the direction he had always planned to go in. So, um,
Okay, so if you see me running something that doesn't look right to you, stop me, please. <laughs> um, and I noted the need for a uh, frequently asked question section, um, and he's he understands that. Um, and a link to whoever ends up being our real estate broker. Um, and I've already talked about that narrative that Berta will be drafting. So, um, any comments on any of that? No. Um, I was wondering, uh, with the resources that I'm putting together, is there, um, while you're talking to Rick about putting the website and things that are important, is there any way that he can add a form of a search engine to the resource page? So the resource page, and what I mean by that is um, the resources that I've been gathering, they kind of break down. So yes, there's these houses available, but then we also know that people in general who would be looking to purchase these houses or would be interested might need financial help in doing so. Um, and so the resource list will be of other organizations or things or services within New York State or within the county that people can access to help them purchase some of uh, TCLB's properties. Um, so if the resource page in itself could be searchable, so someone searching maybe for down payment assistance, um, credit, um, help or because those are things that need to be in place first before someone uh yeah. first time home buyers first, yes yeah stuff like that so right. kind of i the resources i have i can put them of course in categories but if they could make it really awesome for people to just put in a in the search engine within the category so then they get the like really really down to the resources that they need without having to roll through all this stuff, that would be awesome. Bert, I'm oh. oh. guessing that you know of a site that looks good to do that? Um, yes, I've seen a few sites where you can go through and search for particular uh, things. So I'll send something as an example to you. Okay, that'd be... Yeah, I, I've seen the same. The first thing that occurred to me was in a, in a lot of online forums, it's like search this forum or search this page, the page that you're on versus, you know, or if you're on the home page, it's search and then there's a drop down and search, you know, th sort of an outline of the site and you can select whichever part. I'm sure there are multiple ways to do it, but I think that would need to be spelled out. Otherwise we would just get a search the site period. Uh, and I like that idea about the resources, which suggest you have lots and lots of them which is also excellent <laughs> yeah yeah i've been i've been going really hard into the uh to gathering resources this whole uh well last week and a little bit of this week it's been a lot of fun just learning the things that are out there and i'm like wow these are all really really great um really great for people to know um, just an added thing, and I haven't started working on it yet. I talked to Heather about it. Um, we've been meaning to do a Land Bank 101 presentation, most of which would be the legal process for purchasing properties. Um, and just as a sidebar on the discussion we just had, most of our properties are purchased with rehab loans and not home ownership, but doesn't mean we shouldn't have it on there. Um, but I'm going to be working on that. Um, and then that sort of dovetails into the realtor discussion as well, because I think it's important, you know, whatever realtor we hire, that they understand the process um, based upon the RFP proposals. Um, I don't think they necessarily know our process based upon what they've put in. So it's important that we interview and have that conversation with them. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to shoot this email so you guys, so we're all on the same page with this. Okay. Okay. Oh. Am I still sharing? <laughs> yeah. And we'll go back to normal.
so moving on to the discussion about the real estate services RFP. So I, um, I lied to you guys when I said I'd have something to you two days ago, but it's been really, really crazy busy. Um, which I say all the time, but it really is. So let me um, do another share screen. I sent um, I sent this out uh, maybe an hour ago, or I should say a couple hours ago. So I'm sure you didn't, haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, so if you would like me to, I can try to do a quick run through this. It's it's uh, I, I pulled out sections of each proposal and tried to set it up here as a side-by-side -side compar co comparison of what they were supposed to provide back as part of their proposal. Um, I'm, I'm guessing no one really had a chance to, to look at that. I, looked I, read, at it. I read them individually. Um, I didn't get a chance to read this, uh, you know, conglomerate. Yeah, this is the same information. It's just easier to to be able to see both applications side by side. Yeah, and Tony, I looked, I looked through it. Um, oh. Though it's a lot of detail that, uh, I mean, I don't know, just because I looked through it doesn't mean I digested it, but uh, <laughs> if possible, I felt like, I feel like the most helpful thing in the short term might be just to point out differences um, that you noted or, or anyone, I suppose. Uh, I, in my quick review can't say that i saw what i saw were too many significant differences but i'm no expert in real estate sales either so um I, well i'm sure i missed things <laughs> so i'm sorry go ahead kate i think it was that's okay um so and again this is just the star as your counsel and and um you know my experience with all this. I'm also a licensed broker, so I, I get it. Um, and the reason why I said it, I'm, I'm not quite sure, and we probably wouldn't expect them to know our process, but um, the pricing on um, Kelly Kylie, that one, is much better than Howard Hanna. Howard Hanna is a large conglomerate. I'm sure you know right. that. Um, and there's a minimum 2,500 on the properties there. You'll see that, and then that is extremely high, um, but they probably don't realize that one, the realtor does not put in the contract, that it's an application process. The contract is done by my office. Um, there's no attorney approval phase on that. It's sort of a take it or leave it because of the process. Um, Generally speaking, they do not hold escrow down payments. My office does uh, because we're in charge of the contract process. So there's a bunch of, you know, normal course realtor stuff that they would normally do in the sale of just any old piece of property that doesn't apply here. So um, for the most part, it's really the MLS listing, the active marketing of the property these days, realtors very rarely show up and show the property to a potential buyer. It's usually the buyer's agent. Um, but if the buyer, you know, doesn't have an agent, then um, our agent would have to show. Um, and in some cases, we, you know, we would need to have them understand the condition of the property and that maybe, you know, um, we'd have to be careful with where we're bringing people within the property because I've had a couple land bank clients lose people into basements. They've fallen through the floor, that kind of a thing. <laughs> so um, in any event, um, you know, I think that is, you know, that you, I think you should talk to both of them and interview them. And we should also explain the process to them. I know Sherry, I think Tony, she was a realtor on, a buyer's realtor on one of these, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 24 McClelland. Yeah. And, and she did not necessarily like our process. Um, and, you know, 
that was conveyed to me that it's not clear, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully, you know, we'll be straightening that out, but we would not be looking to change our process. Um, so the, the, the real thing with the realtor here is really just listing the property and showing it. And, um, you know, like I said, it's by application and the board has to approve that application. So it's not an automatic, you know, I put in an offer and I've signed a contract. It, it's a whole process. So I think we need to talk to both of the applicants and say, you know, here's how this works. Um, based upon what we're telling you, do you want to adjust your proposal? And if not, um, you know, that's fine too. But I think, you know, price yes, is I definitely think, an yeah. issue for us. And I, th I just think the $2,500 minimum is too high based upon the prices of our properties. You know, Kate, I, um, that's why I kind of showed, um, where those two would max out. So, so basically the difference between Hannah and Keeley, um, is on residential and commercial buildings, commercial buildings. We have one that's definitely going to be over $41,000. So it's not going to be the $2,500 minimum. It's going to be the 6%. Um, for residential buildings, it would, um, the difference would be when we sell a residential building between 25,000 and 41,000, there would be a difference between the two. Um, anything we renovate is definitely going to be marketed for far, far, far more than $41,000. Anything that we stabilize, um, you know, they, but we don't do much more than that. I can, let's see, 3209, 3211, sold for i believe forty thousand dollars that's the closest one i can think that would that would hit that mark but generally when we sell a, um a stabilized building they they sell for around twenty thousand dollars like 3325 6th avenue is is an example 899 river street is an example um you know 836 river um they all went for for definitely twenty thousand or below and we pay for right now the land bank pays the realtors fees and generally um, because some buyers come to us without representation from a realtor um, sometimes the agent would get dual representation so the full six percent um, you know I think part of our procedure too and and again you don't have to do it but you really should consider especially when money is tight that you know, uh, on the listed properties that buyers will be responsible um, for a portion of the real estate commission. Um, they already are responsible for just about all the other fees. Um, other land banks, you know, do it that way. Um, so just a thought. Okay. Um, well, so the other thing that uh, a couple things to point out. Neither one has an office in Rensselaer County. Um, Great. Hannah's office is near Walmart's in Half Moon. Keeley's office is near Crossgates. Um, they both have folks that live. Uh, Keeley has someone, um, the retired uh, New York State trooper, who, who was actually involved in the sale of 899 River Street. Um, she lives in Brunswick. And one of the folks uh, working for Hannah um, uh, worked at Realty USA on Hoosick Street for 10 years, and she's been living in Rensselaer County for 40 years, lives in North Greenbush. So I, I was trying to get a feel for, okay, um, how well are these people going to really know Troy? Thanks. So um, the one red flag that I still have to run down, um, one of the requirements was that they are they um, be a New York State licensed broker for five plus years, and I quickly and and so uh, in the Ke Keeley proposal, they said that they received their license license five years ago. Or I'm sorry, in, in 2016. So 2016 plus five lands us to a date that I don't know. So in other words, if if they received their license 
December 31st, 2016. They haven't had it for five years. Um, so there's a website that the state operates that's down. <laughs> um, and I couldn't find out whether or not they actually had the, the five-year um, broker license in place. That's listed as a requirement, Kate, but I don't know how um, firm you think we ought to stick to that. Well, um, you know, this, because it's professional services, this isn't really a bid that is under, you know, uh, state finance law and public contracts. So it's really, um, you know, the, the, the pricing and, um, you know, the most, the, the specs of the contract meet what we need them to meet. So, you know, we do have a lot of discretion there. And quite frankly, if these are the only two, I don't think um, the fact that they don't have offices in Rensselaer County is a deal breaker. Um, although um, you're right, I mean, we would prefer someone who knows Troy. So I think that goes to interview questions as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. how well do you know Troy? Do you have someone in your firm that does if you don't, you know, um, that kind of a thing. Um, and then, you know, five years, I mean, for what you're advertising and what you're doing and the fact that most of the process is really done by my office, all you're really asking them to do is market the property. So I, I don't think five years, if they're short of that, that's fine. I mean, you don't want a brand new realtor, but you know, three years would probably do it. Okay, well, that's why I asked. I just didn't know how hard and fast that requirement was. So that then I don't have to even check. The other thing I noticed too, and it's standard language, they probably have language where they pop out responses to these RFPs, you know, all the time, is um, they're gonna do a market analysis, which makes me chuckle a little bit because the reality is there is no comparable market. Land banks have had you know, that problem for, you know, the five years they've all been in, in existence. So essentially, um, you know, you might assign some value to it, what you think you could get for it, but there's really not a lot of comparables other than the properties we've already sold. Yeah. So, you know, again, I think it's magic language they just throw <laughs> in there, but it does go back to my original point of, you know, how well do they know our process? And we should probably, when we interview them, you know, and I'm happy to be on that call, just say, hey, let's start by telling you a little bit about how this works and what we do and what would be your approach, because I think it's going to change based upon what we tell them. That seems very reasonable. Yeah. And then give them a chance to, uh, to, to what, update, you know, depending upon, let's see if they're still interested and if they are, then you know, we, we have given them some kind of time frame with, within which we'll get back to them. Yeah. Anybody opposed to that idea? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, I agree. I, I Could I clarify one thing? So would they need to officially resubmit a different fee schedule or this whole package again? How exactly would that? Well, mean? we could permit them to amend it. You know what I mean? It's no big deal. Um, we put it out RFP style just to see who was out there who would be interested. It wasn't something that, you know, pursuant to the state contract law absolutely had to be bid. We just did it because it seemed like a good way to, to handle this. Well, we have time. The good news is we have time before we have to sell properties. The bad news is we have time because we have to sell properties. We have that many properties to sell. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, Kate, do you want me to, to uh, just by email um, try to schedule something for you, me, and them, or do you want to have the whole committee do it? What's your thinking? Well, I think the the committee should, they have to make the ultimate decision of who they want to hire, so. Well, I'm talking um, about, um, you know, you explaining to them how our process really works, that conversation. Well, I think the committee should hear that because I'll ask the question, you know, based upon what I've told you today, is that, does that change 
right. you know, and anything in your proposal or your approach to how, you know, and I think like maybe Suzanne or Andrew, somebody would be like, okay, you know, off the top of your head, what do you think the best way to, to market these properties is and to see what they have to say, right? What I fear and what happens a lot um, is it's sort of a set it and forget it. So once they put it up on MLS and they've done that job, you know, maybe they get a call and they, you know, facilitate, you know, a visit to the property. But, you know, if there's no one actively asking or making requests about the, the, the property, what are they really doing, right? So what's going to be their approach to really get us out there? And I think the committee probably would have other questions too they might want to ask. You know, like, I don't know, have you ever had a client where um, you were actively marketing uh, blighted properties in a program like this? Um, have you done any REO, which would be similar? Um, you know, things like that. And um, just hear what they had to say, you know, that's all. Yeah, I just didn't know. I just didn't. I needed to understand what path forward you wanted to take. So that's that's fine. sure. I mean, we all need another meeting like we need a hole in the head. But I think this is important, um, you know, for the committee to, to know who they're hiring and be comfortable with it. Suzanne, don't you think so? I mean, I... Oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I would want to know if they would be comfortable showing properties in a neighborhood that a lot of people won't go to, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, going to show up in high heels and in a Gucci bag, or, or, you know, those things, and all that works into uh, how people look at the land bank and look at them and look at the properties. So yeah, I think it's necessary. I, it's I also oh. it seems Sorry, well just um, seems like maybe it would be good to. Um, for anybody, for any of us who might have legitimate questions to write them down and have some sort of kind of checklist for when this conversation actually happens be, um, so that um, we make sure that the things that we care about are asked and answered, or at least, yeah, that's what I mean, asked and answered. It's a good idea. Yeah, I, I like that. I was thinking that uh, along with this other question, which is, if this is a formal interview, is it marketing or is it the hiring committee that's doing it? Uh, uh, I think, and it if it's interview, oh. I completely agree. We should have written questions ahead of time. Um, and so we can approach both the same. So they get the same, you know, at least initially the same question. Since it's a contract for quote unquote marketing services, I think it's your committee. You're not hiring uh, W-2 staff. Yeah. So I think it's definitely within your purview. Plus you're the only fine people that got together to talk about it. So. <laughs> Plus Andrew and I are Great both argument. on the We're hiring the same committee. committee. It's just, I just, I don't oh, even good. know if it mattered. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, you're just going to be making a recommendation to the board and telling them why, you know, or or maybe you say, man, eh, we're going to put it out to bid again. You know, that's up to you. Yep. I thought about that too. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kate. That was really good. Okay. Let me jump into the next agenda item. Oh, There's... let me close this field. Hold on. <laughs> ah, I lost the, the, oh, there it is. Okay, community liaison, introduction and discussion. I think we've gotten that done. <laughs> yeah, I think we did that. Yeah, I had a feeling Berta would want to do a little bit of talking about uh, how she plans to get all this stuff done. And I, I already have heard you've hit the ground pretty hard and are running fast so thank you the part i didn't hear berta which would uh, be something i think i brought up uh before is um certainly on the website uh for the land bank it do you um do you foresee having a um you know making yourself available to community groups to give them a you know like i don't know a 15 minute spiel on the land bank properties or how you can help folks um, 
make the most of the land bank? Okay, yes, I'm unmuted. Um, yes, absolutely. That would be one of, I guess the main priorities is that if someone does have questions or if I, once I do share information on how people can reach a site, uh, properties that Troy Community Land Bank is already um, working with or has in existence. Um, my main thing is making it easier for people who live in those areas to have the information they need so that purchasing a property is actually like feasible for them. Um, right. Because that's like been one of, the, or like giving them the information on like where to start, where to go. Um, step one, hey, where are you at? And then like going through the steps of the organizations that I already know that can get them in a spot where they could possibly own. Um, Cause it's just seems like people just need like a whole whole circle. It's like Troy Community Land Bank has these properties, has these things, has this awesome stuff. And then it's like, how do we get the people to that? And then usually it's people just don't think that it's for them or that it's, it's, it's accessible for them. So I would definitely be able to answer questions on how people can start or where people can go so that, um, you know, their dream of actually having a home in the neighborhood that they live in um, is reachable and not so far away. So right. I would, would like to at least be within continue. I've kind of already do that in a way with uh, some of the things that I do. It's like, hey, this person needs this thing. It may not be something that I have ever learned about or known about, but I've just always been the one that's like, all right, research. Where could I go to get all this information so that I could, now that you've asked me, now I'm in this dark, deep hole of searching all this stuff for you. So um, that's been my thing for a while. So yeah, for sure. That I think that would be a main priority of this position is to make sure that people have combined resources to um, be able to purchase a property. Erna, have you seen the application yet? The most recent one for to apply for a property? I have seen the application. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I've been looking at that because I've been trying to find um, different ways to make that bilingual so that other people within who speak different languages um, can have an easier access point to um, being able to fill that out. Um, also, we can, uh, Kamali from C found this, I forget the name of it, but I was super excited when she mentioned it. Um, there's this company that seat or someone already it's free basically and they help people so say you have a someone that comes in they want to purchase a property but they speak a different language or they want to have a conversation you can kind of tag them in um and they will switch the language and be able to speak that language that the other person um is speaking i'm definitely not giving the best gist of it i'll sort give of like a translator you know. Kind of, yeah, a translator that um, is already a free service that exists. Um, so that would be super cool so, to kind of like cut off some of the language barriers um, for some of the people who may be interested. But for the form that exists, the application that exists, I'm trying to work with a college, um, mainly Siena. They've been doing a lot of work on um, a resource database for nonprofits, but they also have some of their students who have done different things in different languages for other projects and whatnot. So I've been working on um, having a meeting with them to see if they already have just students or people who are doing things like that so we can get it done for capital F-R-E-E, -E, but um, to kind of partner with them on that would be really cool. Um, Cause I don't know any other language, but you know, they know people who do. So those are, I think I just got off on a tangent on your question. So. It's okay, I just wanna make sure that you had seen it. So you have a general consensus of how it works, but yeah. Yes, yes, I have seen it. Um, I have seen the website, so I'm super excited for the new one that's coming. Um, not to say anything bad about the website, but I do think that um, a new one to make it more accessible for people to like really understand what 
um, TCLB does would be really awesome. And I can't wait for it to be done so that I can share it too. Because well, right we, now, love, I guess, we love your energy. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I have a lot of it. Like even at 5.30 at night, I'm like shocking myself. I run about 10% of it from time to time. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah. I don't remember, I don't remember um, from your resume. Do you live in Troy? I do live in Troy. Oh, great. Um, I yeah. live, um, so right now I live, so if you're going up, I guess off Brunswick Road, so I'm right before you hit Brunswick, so you know where it splits off and you can either go Pauling or straight up past yeah. the skirts. I'm like, a, I'm in the townhouses here. Um, my husband was living here first, so now I'm here. But before that, I lived downtown on 2nd Street. Then I lived in South Troy. Then I lived on Hoosick. I've pretty much lived in, um, and then I lived on 6th Street in North uh, North Troy. So I kind of hit up all the areas. Just oh, great. To what it was, <laughs> just to see what it was like. And I'm still in Troy because I love living in Troy and I love the community of Troy and everything about Troy. So oh, I've been hopping yeah. around. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. Um, when are we going to meet next, gang? Um, sounds like we're going to need to um, find out when the two real estate brokers can join us. That, thank you. Okay. Or do we want to say this is the time? Oh no, I think you better. See yeah, what they, they got. Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll. I'll uh, Maybe. Sure. Well, the thing is. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, they would be one at a time, or or consecutive, or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably two separate. Uh, like back to back, half hour yeah. or something. Yeah, two separate Zoom meetings um, that are, this is a negotiation kind of thing, right? So, or is it open to the public to view? No, I think it's just an interview by the committee. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, and okay. we should, if we have questions, and I hope we do to sort of put together, we should send them to yeah. the committee, to Tony, to... Do you want to do some e email ping pong so everyone can add to a list? A list of that questions? sounds sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that thread now. <laughs> Tony, you're not allowed to type anything until. <laughs> yes, don't respond until you've gotten at least one email from everyone. <laughs> and should we set a deadline for when we should at least have one question ready? Yes. Like by the end of next week or something just i mean that's crazy talk jeanette <laughs> it should okay. be one week prior to whenever we target to actually have the interviews right yes yeah, yeah. Oh. if we if we my problem is the longer i wait between what i'm supposed to do and the actual activity the more unlikely i am to remember what the hell it is so, agree um, me too all that way <laughs> agree <laughs> That, that's why I was saying, like, by the end of next week. Well, I'll set that deadline for myself if you guys think it's too strenuous. But anyway. I think, I think that's good. I'm with you. End of next week. <laughs> yeah, I can do Ten that. Ten days, right? What's today? Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah. Ten days. Yeah. Okay. Send them to Tony. Great. I sent an example of what that, um, Tony, you had said to send an example of the website that I was talking about. Oh. And then I took a screenshot of the part that I'm talking about. So it's attached in a picture. Um, so you can see. So I think I sent it to everyone, but that's what I mean for the resource page so that you can um, relay it to Rick or I think it's Rick who's working on the website to see if that's something that can be added in a search engine way. Um, if not, that's cool too, but I think it would be really, really awesome to make it super easy for people to get okay. to things. Um, I just want to, yeah. it's different than what the committee was talking about in terms of a search engine. It's okay. different. Yeah. I'm not talking about an overall search engine. I'm just talking about for the resource page. The so you're on the website and then you go to the resource page 
the resource oh, page okay. in itself, if it can have gotcha. a way that you can search just the resources that are there so that if you're only looking for down payment assistance or whatever, you get to yeah. where you need to go. I, I, I've got you now. Yeah. My new rule is if I can do something in a minute, then I just do it <laughs> right away. <laughs> so I'm with you. <laughs> I, I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> when you look up procrastination, I'm in there smiling at you. <laughs> <That's> terrible. <laughs> I scare myself when, when I think procrastination. <laughs> okay, so um, anything else? We didn't come up with a date for the next meeting, though, did we? Or where, oh, or did I miss yeah. that? No, we, I think we have to see when. Um... Oh, we're going to see when they're available, oh, and that's the yeah, next meeting. Yeah. Yes. Ah, oh, thanks for that reminder. I lost it already. <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. Okay. So, um, should we adjourn this meeting? I'll motion then? to adjourn. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was nice yeah. talking to you all, and nice seeing everyone. Thank you. You too. Yes, yeah, welcome. Time. So the meeting is yeah. ending at 547 and um, see you all soon at the um, monthly meeting. Bye. All right. Bye, all right. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.